Thank you. So welcome to the derivatives boff, everybody. Um, this is mainly going to be an open discussion, and I'll start with a few minutes describing Debian's uh, initiatives towards our derivatives. Um, so Debian's the basis for a lot of distributions, um, notably Ubuntu and some other ones. I'm sure everyone here knows most of those. Um, so yeah, we'll share some experiences and that sort of thing during the buff. Um, so the agenda, um, initially I thought this was going to be in more of a buff room around a table, like, um, and so we could do some introductions, but maybe people can do that when they speak. So, um, why don't we do that now just so we know who's in the room? If people can just okay. take turns standing up and, and introducing what derivatives they're representing. Okay, cool. Um, so, I'm Paul and I initiated the Debian Derivative Census and have been working on derivatives for a while. I mean, I integrating Debian and derivatives. Hi, I'm Wookie. Uh, I guess I'm representing Mdebian mostly and in Lenaro insofar as it's a distro, which it's trying not to be, but um, not doing a very good job on the whole. <laughs> sure, I'm Colin, uh, representing Ubuntu. Hello, I'm Raphael Herzog and I'm representing Kali as well. Florian Haftmann, uh, I'm actually representing the city administration of Munich here, who runs on 14,000 workstation uh, Ubuntu-like operating system and on the technical back end, so to speak, we use a lot of Debian infrastructure. Anyone else? Okay, I'll introduce Debian's um, work around derivatives. So this is the derivatives wiki page, and there's a bunch of links at the bottom. Um, our main initiative is the derivatives front desk, which is a place for derivatives to come together, talk to each other, and ask questions from Debian people. Um, I see channel, mailing list, yeah. it's has been pretty active initially, but it seems to have tapered off. Um, and mostly me sending mails about sense the derivative census these days. Um, the next initiative we have is the derivatives guidelines, how to be a, a good um, derivative and the different things that you need to have to create a derivative and how to do some of the some of the things that need to be done uh, when working on a derivative. Um, the next thing the next thing is the derivative census. This is a project that I initiated a couple of years ago now. I think um, it aims to integrate information about derivatives back into Debian, so that Debian de developers are exposed to the ideas that derivatives can bring to the table. Um, so it basically consists of a bunch of wiki pages describing the derivatives and then we use that information to feed it and we feed that information back into Debian infrastructure. Um, so as you can see there's about 30 or 40 derivatives represented there. There are a lot more derivatives out there, but um, yeah, I need to do some more outreach. So the 
integration of the information about census from the census. So far we have planet debris and derivatives, which aggregates a bunch of blogs from all the different derivatives in the census. Um, and I'm working on generating patches from all the derivatives against Debian packages and then presenting that information on the package tracking system. The patch generation is all done. I just need to work on the display of that information. Um, and our other initiative is DEX, which is aims to get groups of developers from Debian and from derivatives to specifically push particular sets of patches back to Debian. It's not particularly active at the moment. Um, we need to identify some areas we can work on and do that. Um, yeah. So that's Debian's initiatives with distributions. Um, let's open it for discussion. And if someone could help take um, notes of this open discussion, that would be good. Um, and that's the Gobi details if you want to join that. I guess I'll start. Uh, you you mentioned that uh, Debian derivatives is pretty quiet, uh, which is which is true. Um, I would argue that that's kind of a good thing. Um, the uh, from from my point of view, the the value of Debian derivatives is uh, helping um, derivatives who are less familiar with with the rest of Debian. Uh, I wouldn't generally direct uh, Ubuntu developers at that if they're trying to figure out what to do. Uh, I think it's generally more productive for them to go straight to the particular places they need to work. If they if they need to work on packages, they should be going to the, the maintainers of those packages. If they're trying to discuss something that's uh, that's release process relevant, they should be going to the release team, etc. Uh, so it seems kind of unnecessary to indirect through Debian derivatives for that. Yeah, I can definitely see your point there. Um, So one thing I'm interested in um, from the Ubuntu perspective, Ubuntu does have a, a policy that when, when they derive packages, um, patches are meant to be submitted upstream to Debian either immediately or you know, next time the package gets merged or whatever um, in order to keep the, the technical debt from patches low. Um, I wonder if, 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 the, if the DEX uh, initiative is at all interested in you know, tracking the status of that, although you, you mentioned the DEX is fairly inactive at the moment, but so I don't know, I, I don't have any visibility on like how many patches get upstreamed, how, how effective are we at getting those into a state that the Debian maintainers will integrate them, is there a large volume of patches that are just sitting in the BTS um, unaddressed or, or how that relationship looks writ large across the distribution. Because I know at the microscopic level, at the individual pack packager level, I know there's lots of good relationships, but I don't know how we're doing overall. Um, I seem to remember a discussion recently about this, and I think the answer was that most, package, most patches get adopted by Debian. Um, and I think, Lucas, there are some stats about that on UDD, maybe? For the user tags? Yeah, for, for Ubuntu, there's a user tag they are supposed to use. I think it's still being used. Um, for other, d or, well, sometimes. <laughs> uh, for other derivatives, I don't think it's the case. But uh, the, the thing that we don't have stats on in an organized way is how many of the so we, we have uh, stats on how many bugs total have been filed ever with that user tag. There are no stats on how many of those remain open as far as I know. Uh, I remember at the uh, at last but one DebConf, I did a sort of ad hoc search and uh, I think there were something like a thousand Ubuntu patches in the in the BTS that had not been applied. Uh, I don't know, I don't have anything, that, that's a vague memory and I don't have anything more current than that. 
So, but certainly uh, at various points in time, we have we have indeed been in situations where we have had very large numbers of patches outstanding in the BTS with very little activity. But uh, these are not all patches. Um, so currently, when there are some specific topic, um, I prefer to file um, a bug in Debian uh, for the specific topic, like Wookie uh, uh, did set up a user attack for, for ARM64. Uh, ARM and um, so I file a bug with these user attacks. And you, you cannot file um, um, a bug in Debian with two different user attacks. So, so with user tags for two different users. Yes. Not so, yeah, 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 but it, sorry, but it's tedious then to, yeah. and so um, yeah, not I found, all. I found that annoying as well. Just on that, you actually can. I think I've done that um, myself. Uh, you can send them, but only one user gets the user tag applied. Yeah, right. Really? Yeah. Mm. I thought it did, but. Yeah, yeah. It seems to me that the patching part of this patches stuff is relatively organised. The thing that seems to get stuck is new packages that start in Ubuntu um, and then just kind of sit there for years before somebody. And sometimes there's, uh, you know, like a USB creator got is still stuck after about three years of we really ought to move this uh, because uh, usually it's down to slightly higher, stricter standards of of packaging, someone saying, oh, that's not quite good enough. We really ought to change the name to something less generic or more, more generic uh, before it go in. And then whoever was enthused goes, oh, well, that sounds difficult. I'd have to change it in Launchpad, and I can't really be bothered so it doesn't happen. Yeah, so one thing I've encouraged the Ubuntu community to do, and I haven't, haven't been as rigorous about this as I was meant to, this was meant to be announced more widely, is, is from the Ubuntu side, we've proposed, okay, if a package exists in Ubuntu and it should go into Debian, well, the logical thing to do is to request an adopter and just use the existing uh, WNPP system and, and RFA it because the packaging exists, it just needs the maintainer in Debian in most cases. Do, do people in the room think that's a reasonable approach for that? Uh, and is that something that anybody here would actually be interested in adopting those packages? <laughs> I think that works fine so long as um, it's in good enough, you know, the packaging is, is in good enough condition, but sometimes it was a bit sort of haphazard. Uh, and somebody will complain that really it should be done a bit better than that, and that becomes a harder problem. Uh, well, as I said in my previous talk, I, we have some connection to some Ubuntu derivative and, and Debian team. It's called BioLinux, and they are using the common VCS with us, and we are we are working the same code. We are just releasing it in Debian and working together. And so, if you have some package uh, in this field, yes, I will adapt it. But um, I'm, I don't know if maybe we, we need some, some kind of shared interest between these people. Um, so we, we, we started with this when we, we made a common sprint with these people. So if, if you have um, some kind of common field in whatever sense, just let's meet Ubuntu people and Debian people to some sprint and then I could see increased chances for this. My trollish rebuttal. Who wants to come to the uh, Ubuntu, Mir, and Unity sprint? <laughs> yep. Place okay. us on Nobody the list, not, not here in this room. <laughs> Fair enough. So sometimes when there are new packages in Ubuntu, um, I'm explicitly not, not going to upload these to, to Debian Unstable or to Debian at all um, because um, I do know that I don't have the time to maintain them. And um, two examples, um, OpenJDK requires work for, for every architecture, uh, every new architecture, so it's extra work for every architecture um, to, to maintain that in, in Debian and uh, for, for OpenJDK, I, I explicitly use my Ubuntu address to, to do the maintain maintenance in, 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 in Debian. Um, <coughs> another example, so, so um, I, I wouldn't add a new architecture now to, uh, to, um, to OpenJDK um, in Debian unless I have some, some money uh, within Debian to, to maintain it. And I think the other thing um, are um, the cross-compilation environments um, 
which are not yet in, in Debian, and, uh, but I think we, we will have a talk on, on Thursday or Friday about that. Yeah, ultimately, those packages need maintainers, and if they come with the maintainers, that would be even better. But not realistically. True, yeah. So I have a question um, for people in the room. Maybe I can have a show of hands. Who reads Planet Debian Derivatives? <laughs> no one. Okay. <laughs> Is it because you don't have time or? Yeah. Okay. Um. So probably something more useful for me to work on is the patches stuff. Do people think that's a good thing to have? Patches from all the derivatives? Uh, I have um, a question regarding um, the source of the packages. Um, some derivatives are using uh, testing and other are using unstable. Uh, Sometimes both, depending on the long term for Ubuntu, for example. Uh, and I'm a bit concerned that testing is not um, a rolling distribution as it should be, because people are quite happy when the package is in unstable only. And some, some people are, well, if it's in unstable, it's in Ubuntu, and then that's OK. And the kind of competition and, well, I'm always looking at the empty part of the glass. It's a bit negative, but uh, it might become an issue uh, if Ubuntu continue to grow. So uh, we, we do use uh, generally unstable. We have flirted with using testing in the past as a source during Debian freezes. It mostly hasn't worked out for us for one reason or another. Um, I'm going to go into this in a fair bit more depth in uh, uh, there's, a, there's a session on, uh, I think it's entitled Ubuntu Daily Quality Improvements on uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, and if people are interested in that, I encourage you to come to that. Uh, the, um, uh, I, I, do, I share your concerns about the uh, division of um, the, the division of labour between testing and unstable in Debian. Uh, and I think we could do a much better job at uh, not letting not letting testing languish, uh, and I think there, there are things that, uh, that Ubuntu could contribute to that specifically. It, what about uh, the other distribution? Sorry for the microphone. I, what about the other distribution? Do you have some statistics about what source they are using? Was that, is that unstable or testing? So the census wiki pages list which um, Debian suite that all the derivatives that we have there are, li are derived from. Um, there are some who use old stable, some who use previous versions of old stable, some who use stable, some who use testing, some who use unstable, and some who use some packages from Ubuntu, some packages from other places. So there's a whole range of different ways you can make a derivative distribution. But what I'm interested in, if you say people are happy if packages are in unstable and don't call for care for testing, um, do you think they are actively uh, um, working against uh, migration by filing uh, uh, release critical bugs? Uh, or what, what, what are they doing to, to, to stop people from going to testing? I, I, I haven't seen cases of malicious. Uh, that, that's, that's not not that's not that's not no 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 that's not not caring. That's that's. Uh, caring not to, uh, if you see what I mean, that, that's kind of different. Um, the, it, it's more, it, much more common is neglect, just uh, it, it's not something that scratches your particular itch having things in testing, this sort of attitude is very, very common. Um, it, it, and it, it's understandable, right, if, if, uh, if you're not doing something that relies on testing working, and many, many Debian developers aren't, uh, then why do you care? Um, and you, you kind of should care. I, th I, th I think that I think they should. But um, no, in, in many cases, you know, if you do, if you don't sort out your build failures on some architecture that you used to build on, or if you're stuck in some big complicated transition or something, it can actually be a non-trivial amount of work to get everything sorted out. Um, I think it's something that Debian developers in general have a duty to take care of, but not everybody agrees. 
But that's just an issue of lazy maintainers, okay? That is not uh, because testing is not a rolling distribution. Or busy or uh, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever word you take here. But it, it, um, I had the impression from, from the contribution that uh, people generally don't care about packages. If they are unstable, it's fine. <laughs> so if you want... Um, to, to, to look at current issues, um, you could uh, look at the proposed migration scripts um, uh, or, or web pages which Colin maintains. So if you look, for example, for your team uh, in Ubuntu, yeah, but it does give a, give a hint uh, on, um, well, which package currently built and which one doesn't. And, huh? I, 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 I didn't want to, to attack the Debian made team. <laughs> no, no, but. Well, well. Um, <laughs> no, but, but um, uh, what I do want to say uh, so, so the, the proposed migration uh, detects uh, these kind of issues uh, a bit earlier um, than, than uh, they are. The, detected in Debian because uh, Debian, well, only cares uh, once per release or once they, they should not migrate or be removed from testing. And, and Ubuntu does this check, I think, um, now continuously. Or so, so <laughs> the, the checks are there in place in Debian as well. The, the Brittany reports are published everywhere and responsible maintainers certainly can be proactive about looking for the status of their packages and knowing what's keeping them from migrating or not. Right, the, the reports are not substantially different between Debian and Ubuntu. I'll, again, I'll go into this in much more detail on Thursday. But uh, the, the, there, may be, there may be some differences that uh, Ubuntu's archive cycle is much quicker than Debian's. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in what, uh, what, other what other Debian derivatives do by way of uh, continuous integration work. Uh, uh, doing ongoing testing of their um, of their tip branch uh, is is there anything do we have any sort of general widespread information on that or does anybody else want to want to share the sort of the sort of things that they're doing uh, yeah just to move this away from um, Ubuntu specifically uh, uh, generalize it a little bit more I was well, I actually wanted to say, uh, Pabs, well done for all this work, right? It may seem like a bit of an uphill struggle sometimes, and nobody ever, <laughs> <laughs> nobody ever says anything, and you ask a lot of questions, and, and <laughs> so on. Uh, but actually, I think it is useful, and important, and and uh, as I said, the benefit, you know, isn't obvious because, in fact, it is mostly done directly with in the right place uh, by people with some clue. Um, and so, you know. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess part of the problem is that a lot of these things are one-off, kind of, they get done once and then they just kind of sit there. So some of them, it's not surprising that we're not getting much response back. They did the thing and it's done and it just sits there. And as you say, it's based on old stable. Uh, there aren't that many active things. I mean, and MDebian has spent the last 10 years integrating everything we did separately back into Debian. So actually, there's hardly anything left to do. You know, we don't really do integration anymore. Nearly everything we wanted is in Debian, apart from the cross tool chain stuff that Docker's having a go at me for, because I haven't done it yet. <laughs> is the um, crush thing, where the uh, you repack the devs, is that integrated yet? So w in practice, the things that were s too different from Debian, we just stopped doing, because it was too much work. Uh, so, you know, really small Debian, we decided wasn't enough value for the amount of work it was. And, you know, you're better off doing that in OE, to be honest. Um, so we just stopped. And we kept the things that were easy to do and easy to automate uh, and easy to push back into Debian. So, uh, yes, pretty much. So, I mean, uh, there's some separate processing of a subset of Debian, about 3,000 packages, which are just de-bloated. And they actually now live back in the the main Debian archives, so we send it all back again uh, after some sub-processing. I think it's probably fair to say that in Debian is more or less mor morphed into the cross-building efforts in, in Debian proper, and that right. there's the Debian cross mailing list and a huge pile of bugs with user tags for that. Exactly, there's two parts. There's, there's making cross-building in general work, uh, and there's um, 
making debloated versions of Debian binaries. Um, and both of those have been, are increasingly integrated and um, you know, that was all working reasonably well. But yeah, you know, we don't do anything on the Dex server. We might have filled a page in once, you know, but there isn't really much to report. I don't know, um, I don't blog, but uh, Neil does, so maybe that appears in the thing, I don't know, yeah. So speaking of Mdebian, I'm curious to know, is there anybody um, Raspbian-ish in the room? Raspbian? Paul Green, plug wash? I don't know. I don't think so, sadly. Um, yeah, that would be very interesting because they've done a lot of good work. But I think mostly they're just, they intend to be a straight rebuild of Debian, yes, which is similar to what the Debian um, mission is. Yeah, uh, and, but of only, not unstable, only testing, I think, or only stable or something. There's a, a fairly small subset that actually gets done. Um, uh, what is the problem that you can't run mdebian on raspbian so this is all about different arm isa versions of the chipset so we support arm v5 uh, well v4t so in uh, and v7 with floating point uh, in debian but um raspbian uh, the raspberry pi falls squarely between those stools by being v6 with floating point so they could run our v4t old ARML image, but then they wouldn't get all their shiny floating point and it would be slow. Uh, yes. Yes, it's, right. it's an ARMHF ARMv6 port is what Raspbian does. So, so it would be in principle a matter of just adding another arch architecture to Debian or? So yeah, you could add another architecture. Well, it's not another architecture, it's uh, a different ISA. Uh, our, our architectures are strictly speaking uh, ABIs, not uh, ISAs, uh, instruction sets. Right. So we've, we've never we previously added. We've never previously added an architecture for a, a like a, a flavor of the architecture. So and, and, and we talked about this like two or three years ago. We could mark packages with which ISA they were built for, and then we could have tools do all this sort of magically. But we've never done that work in dpackage. And uh, by the time we got that work done, the Raspberry Pi would be obsolete. Uh, yeah, but this, this problem may arise again in other contexts. I mean, uh, it it would have been nice if we decided it was worth the effort three years ago and. The Raspbian thing would have been smoother, but at least more easily integrated. But just to make it shorter and more uh, uh, likely to be done now, isn't it correctly understood that what we simple people would call an architecture would be <laughs> the <laughs> would would be doable now, <laughs> and likely to do with things like Raspberry Pi. Uh, I, know, I know technically it's not the same as an architecture. You would you technically it is something else, but sure, we could do it. Would, Like we did with RMHF. Well, I mean, it, it's all, it is a new architecture, but that involves uh, multiplying up the number of builds that we need to support, the number of uh, build failures Debian maintainers care about. Right, it's, right, exactly. So it is, genu it, it, it is genuinely a significant amount of work, and it's, uh, it's not something we should brush off with. We could just do a new architecture. Um, Raphael, do you think you could say something about Kali and ARM stuff? Uh, could I just, uh, yeah. could I just, uh, so there's no, I, I see there's no, there's no reason why uh, we could, you, you couldn't add a ARM 6 HF or whatever uh, to, uh, to D package, but then that would require Raspbian now to rebuild all that stuff with ARM 6 HF. And we could never, we could never support, that still wouldn't mean we could support uh, the Raspberry Pi and Debian because you can't you can't even you can't boot it without non-free uh, boot loader code because it's really it's a graphics processor with a with an arm on the side so and the and the, gra well, the graphics processor is completely non-open so uh, it's probably not nothing, worth not much that can be done to improve this now. yeah it's probably not worth putting too much effort into that particular device. And actually, I disagree quite strongly with the idea of adding new architecture just for a new ISO. I don't think we should do that. I think we should fix it properly if we're going to support that sort of stuff, right? Uh, an architecture is an ABI. It is not an ISO. Um, well, then, but, yeah, yes, but we could do that. You're right. It would work, I think. Um, but I, I just think it's a really bad plan. Right, but the... the, the, the um 
it is the way we implement that architecture in Debian defines uh, an ISA, a minimum version of the ISA. We could just turn the minimum version of the ISA down and just start building v6. Probably doesn't get. But then you never know if you have an old package. If you have a random deb, you don't know whether it was built for v7. So you need to put that information into the packages. So then all the all the all the stuff built for Raspbians will work on everything else. It works works one way. It's compatible. It's like i386, i486, i586, i686. Exactly the same problem. Right. I mean, I was I was going to point out that we had exactly the same problem um, on i386, where i386. For a while, meant I486, then I586, and I think today it means I686. But there was, is it still 48? <laughs> well, the kernel may think it's 486. The user space disagrees. Um, <laughs> yeah, I believe the GCC maintainer disagrees with you about what's supported. <laughs> Well, Debian i386 is, is built for, requires 586. Ubuntu's i386 requires 686. Anyway, the, the point I was meaning to get to there was that um, this is a problem that we, we c failed to deal with throughout the lifetime of 32-bit x86, where um, there, was, there was certainly lots of demand for a 686 optimized just based on volume of hardware and the, the benefits to the platform. And we simply never dealt with that. And yeah. Sure, but I think the fact that we, the fact that at the time it required us to spin up a new architecture and there was a very clear uh, incentive to do that and we never did it, I think is, is proof that we need a different solution to move forward or we need to you know, get a new consensus around bringing up architectures for that. But I, I do think that Wookiee's plan is, is actually, we're way off topic, aren't we? <laughs> I think when we had this discussion in Ubuntu about LPIA, so we decided to, to have a completely Okay, <laughs> so the alternative which we dis did discard at this um, point of time was uh, just to reuse um, an existing architecture and have something uh, in the binary package marked. Uh, so this is built for, for 686. Um, so at least then um, DPKG or APT would be able to tell you not to install this package on a system which just is um, 486. So I guess to try to bring this back around to the question of derivatives, I, we, we've kind of gone on this, this digression here, which is about eliminating the need for derivatives in certain cases. So is that a useful thing to talk about, how we could make more derivatives uh, into flavors? Is that, is that a conversation that's inter interesting to anybody in this room? I mean, Ubuntu is certainly not doing this anytime soon. Yes, I, I think that's, it's definitely interesting. And I think um, when I'm coming from the Brent's uh, side and Paul does the derivatives, we are working on the same thing from different sides. And um, my plan is to to create all the best um, precondition to to hand over something to people to doing some support. And if it's called derivative or whatever, I think the, the best thing would be to do the, the main preparation inside even because it's the least work for everybody. And so this is definitely a goal I'm explicitly tell all the time. Yeah, so you're working inside Debian to help people to create groups of packages. I'm working to uh, bring Debian derivatives, existing derivatives closer to Debian and try to avoid creating new derivatives by improving Debian so that the things that derivatives need are in Debian. Yeah. So, who uh, here maintains a package in Debian? Hands. Okay. So, if this is the Debian derivatives patches page, um, this is the one for boot chart. So you have blank on Ubuntu, Phoenix, Tails. So a bunch of different distributions are patching it, and there are the patches. Um, the way this works is that it runs on the snapshot.debian.org site and it gets the um, packages from the source packages from the derivatives it does some fancy matching and tries to find out which package which Debian source package each derivative package was derived from um, and then does a dev div and that's where they are um, 
It's on, I don't know if you can see it, but it's dex.alioth.org slash census slash patches. Is there some meta information in UDD about this? But well, this would be cool because then you can easily find this. Yeah, the um, code that generates it is not quite ready for um, outputting me enough metadata for UDD. There is some there, but it's it's not quite enough. And also, we need um, some information from the BTS about source package renaming so that we can um, present the patches on the correct BTS page. Um, yeah. This is great work, really, but uh, the problem is that it's made on the Debian deri derivative side, so it's not really used by derivatives themselves and not advertised by them. So what I would like to see first uh, is that you help me to integrate this into PTS so that we can have PTS... Uh, oh, wait a second. <laughs> PTS installation for derivatives uh, where we can grab this information directly from the derivatives <laughs> and uh, show it on their side as well. Because, as you know, the PTS rewrites that we've been working on during this summer will make it uh, non-Debian specific, and I fully intend to install uh, PTS for Kali uh, in the next few weeks and uh, use the PTS on the Kali side to manage the, the difference between Debian and detect package which needs to be merged again and uh, updated. And uh, uh at the same time, we should generate this patch and keep them uh, on the derivative side as well. So that's an interesting idea. It's not one that I'd thought of because, well, the, the goal here is to expose information about, well, this is the goal of the census that I had been working on, was to expose information about derivatives to Debian people. But the other way is also interesting. And I think, at least for the patches, we could certainly do that. Um, I th the um, metadata that it produces has both sides of the equation. Um, I'm not sure if... Yeah, so this is the metadata that it produces um, SHA-1 of the Debian source package that it thinks the package is derived from. Um, Debian version names and stuff. And yeah, sometimes the heuristics that it uses to figure out which, which packets, pick, package it's derived from are not always the best. So you can see in this case that it thinks that uh, GFX boot themes apto seared, which sounds like a, a theme package for that thing, is derived from the GFX boot themes package, which is possible, but yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, sorry, uh, it, it's astonishingly difficult to write a GFX boot theme entirely from scratch. I find it <laughs> extremely unlikely that they would have done that. So it's much more likely that they derived from from that. Uh, okay. Whether it's structured as a as a patch that could actually be applied to that package, I obviously don't know. But. So yeah, the point is that we have the metadata to do what you wanted to do, Raphael. Um, yeah. And, and I, I'll just add that. From my, my uh, traveling uh, a couple of years ago in India and Indonesia and, and discussing with, the, with Boss Linux and a, a few others in, in those places, uh, I can really see a need an interest from their point of view to see. Well, as a Debian developer, I, I look at the quality assurance pages to, to see how far have others drifted away from us and how could I cherry pick from those and get, get that into Debian. But in, from their perspective, from the derivatives, from your perspective, the derivatives perspective, uh, both as in, uh, in, as in how, how much cooler am I than the Debian, <laughs> but also as like, like a warning sign of well, how, how much have I drifted away that I need to then maintain myself uh, as a warning sign of how much should I maybe try to push it back again. So it's, it's a great way to, to, to see this as quality assurance pages for, for the derivatives to serve them too. It's a lovely idea. But I, I would like to... Well, I, I do not agree if you say they are uh, much cooler. Um, I, I think, yeah, yeah I know. Uh, they just realize Debian as a finished product. And they do not notice that they are able to change something. And so their only way to change something is, uh, well, I derive and do something else, which is perfectly possible, but it's uh, 
only in my opinion is the second best way. When, when you're merging back, uh, I, I've, I've tried to do this a few times with, well obviously with Ubuntu, but also with patches from uh, things like Mimo, uh, and generally it, it, the, the, ones that, the ones that derive from unstable, you have some hope. Uh, they're likely, hopefully, to be reasonably current in terms of what the patch base is. Uh, you have some chance that if you merge some set of patches, then you will actually be able to see their delta getting smaller because they'll probably rebase at some point. But for the, the, the ones based off stable, it's, it's, it's really very difficult for a Debian maintainer to do anything. Uh, the patch is probably against you know, 19 upstream versions back, uh, doesn't, half doesn't apply anymore. Even if you do apply it, your to-do list doesn't go away because the, uh, the derivative in question is unlikely to actually resync until Debian's next stable release. And uh, it's, it's generally quite an unsatisfying thing as a, as a Debian developer to do, I find. Yeah, but I think it's, it's not in the first place when people think, uh, should I derive from unstable or stable? The people want to find a solution. And they have no better idea to, to find this solution than doing this or that. And I think it's, it's maybe also a matter of documentation or just, I, I think this uh, Dex is doing a, a really good job to, to explain people that you can change something inside Debian. And this is, uh, yeah, I, I, I think there could be maybe half of the uh, derivatives if they, people would notice. I, um, I have another question regarding the, um, the depth tree implementation. In the patches, we have uh, applied upstream, not needed. Um, how does that work with derivatives? Is there some standardized way to say, hey, that patch is about um, a new logo that is derivative specific and should not be applied upstream? or upstream, upstream for derivatives? Have yes, anybody exactly. thought about that? Uh, yeah, I think he's referring to this standard, but uh, there's no specific information about uh, whether upstream as a software project or upstream as a distribution. So you can't say you should not upstream this to the upstream author, but you should upstream it to Debian. <laughs> there's no distinction. Uh, I don't think it matters really because if it's specific to the distribution, it's really specific to you. It's rarely useful for the upstream distribution, but not to the upstream authors. So one thing I wanted to point out uh, to you, Colin, is uh, in the case of Kali Linux, we're based off stable, but the package where we diverge, usually uh, it's more backport stuff. So we have more recent package which are closer to unstable or testing and. Uh, the, the changes we, we make are, are potentially interesting. And another thing that I would like to say, it's a, it's a bit of pity, but uh, often, often we, we, we find problems too, too late. I mean, even in Debian, we really lack some of the QA things that we have done in, in Ubuntu, because while well, we were already late in the freeze and we, Kali at least fixed a few of the important problems in the, um, Live, uh, live build uh, in the, uh, another uh, tool which, which is called, um, uh, well, the, the other one who, who makes small, uh, c simple CDD and tools like that, which are not widely used within Debian, but quite used in derivatives. And uh, the big, there is a way, big issue that we are not identifying on the Debian side until the derivatives start using it. And it's a bit too late. Uh, and, uh, so, um, Raphael, if you plan to um, deploy the PTS for, for other derivatives, one thing I, I really do like is, is um, s to know when was a uh, package the last time merged uh, from um, your main distribution. So that, that would be merges.ubuntu.com for Ubuntu. Um, so it would be good maybe to have such uh, a status for, for other derivatives as well, so you can see um, how old is it, uh, or how long is it wasn't it uh, taken care? Um, so that might be useful. Uh, yeah. Slash main. Well, yeah, yeah, choose main, yeah. Uh, no, not, sorry, not that one. Go back. Uh, after 
Right, so actually that's an interesting point. Um, if, if we're saying that one of the concerns about derivatives is when they're basing on, on old stable, that it means there's, we're, it's not rewarding for package maintainers to merge, having that kind of statistic about how good the derivative is doing about, um, about actually merging from Debian could tend to create a virtual, virtuous cycle there in that the maintainers are, are incentivized to, they have the information to know which ones they should focus on, which encourages the derivatives to um, actually keep up with Debian Unstable and, uh, and yeah. So if somebody wanted to do that to make that information available, I can see how that would be potentially useful if people were going to use it. So we're reaching the end, one minute left. Um, did you want, do you have something? I just wanted to know whether, and uh, oh, this brings back a slightly more general thing, from all this research you've done, are we missing any mechanism which would make it easier to integrate changes? Uh, is there something we need to do to make things, or is it just a matter of actually integrating the stuff using the existing mechanisms? Um, I'm not really sure how to answer that. I think it's just a matter of Integrating the patches, um, and the people as well, you know. As a maintainer, there's basically only two places I look in Debian, which is I look at incoming bug reports and I look at the PTS. And normally, I only look at bugs, and I occasionally look at the PTS. So if it's not in, if it's not showing up in one of those two places, it's basically not going to rise to the level of getting my attention and getting any action. So, uh, eventually the patches at least will be on the PTS. Um, so, there are some ideas about w directions we could go for this derivative census and integration of sen uh, derivatives information into Debian. Um, so, which areas do you think that I should focus on? Um, these are some ideas here, or if, if you've got any other ideas, I would be happy to hear about them, I guess, after because we've now finished. Yeah.